Olá! That's Portuguese for hello in Angola. You're listening to Christian Travelers Network, the podcast and platform where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey, Christian Travelers, I'm so glad that you are here. We are exploring different countries alphabetically, um, looking at some of God's many wonders throughout the world, and today we are visiting Angola. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so that you will be one of the first people to know when we release another podcast and get to explore more of the world with us. But without further ado, let's go ahead and learn about this unique country. If you've never heard of it or don't know where to find it on a map, let's take a look. Angola is located in Southwest Africa. It is approximately twice the size of Texas, and it is a mix of deserts, rainforests, and a very humid climate. In fact, they get about 41 inches of rain per year and temps range from 86 Fahrenheit in October to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit in June and July. The coldest and driest months are July and August, making the best time to visit sometime between June and September. The official language of Angola is Portuguese, although many speak Bantu, a language of the indigenous people. Approximately five to six hundred Bantu languages are spoken in southern Africa. So that's a lot to process and often means that what they're speaking at home is different than what they're maybe speaking with the tourists or uh, just out and about in the community. Now, if you're wanting to explore Angola, one of the unique natural wonders is called the viewpoint of the moon. It has unique orange canyons and cliffs, kind of reminding me of the canyon lands in Utah, but all the while still different, and it's just a unique sight to go see. Another one of its natural wonders is the Kalunda Falls. These waterfalls are approximately 344 feet tall and 1,312 feet wide, making it competitive with Niagara Falls especially during the rainy season. If you're wanting to do some safaris and go on some exploration with wildlife, I encourage you to go to Kisama National Park. It has elephants and giraffes, and its savanna is just a large portion of the park that is wonderful to view. Now, due to some of the poaching that has happened there in the past, it is in the process of being repopulated. And I just thought this was such an incredible fun fact. The conservatory that is repopulating a large portion of it is called Noah's Ark and it's based in South Africa. Their goal being to bring back some of those species that are dying away and help repopulate a large portion of Africa and other parts of the world. Last and certainly not least, I encourage you to go check out Sangoya Beach. This is not far from their capital city of Luanda, and it is scenic, beautiful blue waters, and it's an area that oddly is less tourist friendly in that it's less overpopulated with people. So if you're wanting a quiet little getaway, we encourage you to check out this beach. Now, if you're looking for a way to connect with other believers while you're traveling and getting to see these unique sites in Angola, I encourage you to visit our website, christiantravelers.net. There you'll find other believers who enjoy traveling just as much as you do, and you'll find ways to connect with them on trips they're going on, opportunities to invite others to join your own trips, or join to our own communities. These are little niche areas that allow you to share your backpacking tips, share Bible studies together, go talk about some of your favorite things about cruises, etc. It's a great opportunity to come together with other believers and celebrate what God is doing in all realms of the globe. Again, you can connect with us at christiantravelers.net. 
But as you are exploring this amazing country with other people, it's important to take a moment to look at their history and some of their religious dynamics and customs. So first off, Angola is made up of 41% Roman Catholic, 38% Protestants, 21% of people who don't claim any religious faith, and 1% animist. I had to look that up and it's kind of more of a spiritual understanding of the world that every ad object has some kind of spirit. The clouds, the plants, the trees, everything has a spirit and so they respect all of the spirits and the beings and things of this world. So that is just kind of a general rundown of the population. You see Christianity was introduced into the Congo Kingdom by the Portuguese in the 15th century. Marxist leaders in the 70s took over and were not tolerant of religion. But since the abandonment of Marxism, um, there's been an increased tolerance to religion again. Though to be able to worship, to practice, to meet together, they have to have the approval and be recon a recognized organization, otherwise they will be disbanded. So there are believers, but there are still rules within how they can and when they can worship. Now, if you're getting the opportunity to meet with some of the locals, whether it's in worship or um, getting to visit homes and things, there's some cultural nuances that you may want to know. First of all, it's important that you greet the eldest among a group first. It shows a sign of respect to their wisdom and to their experience before moving on to greet others. Dinner still holds to some of those Portuguese roots, often not happening until 8 p.m. or later. And food is often served in a communal bowl, a large bowl of food, and everyone dips their hand in. Um, they often tend to people please or seek to um, share what they think others want to hear. Their yes might be a no. You know, if you are asking if you can hang out later, well, this might not be the best example. They may say yes, but really they have other priorities and commitments. So it's important to read not just their verbal language, but their body language as well. Now, these are just a few pieces of insight into this wonderful and unique country, and I encourage you to do some more research and exploration for yourself. But if you found this at all, at all useful and are looking for a full travel guide, you can find it on our website at christiantravelers.net. It's in our directory and resources to pages. But until next time, safe travels and God bless.